It's time now for This Is Life with Rob McGowan. How we live always changes the world around us. Like a bird on Hello, a this is Rob McGowan again with Life Radio. We're here for another interview uh, for This Is Life. Today we're here with Tony Russell, another gentleman running for council. And uh, how are you today, Tony? I'm doing great. How about you, Rob? Oh, I'm doing really good. Uh, as Playing with this technology stuff is never fun. <laughs> but okay. other than that, I, I like it. All right, on. So, uh, yeah, we got through to you this morning. Where are you sitting at this morning? Well, I'm sitting at St. Mary's Church here in uh, Newcastle Boulevard. I go oh. to school here. I'm taking my GED. So awesome. this is what I'm doing. I'm studying for my math. I got to write my math test again in June. So here's where I'm at. Oh, that's a good spot to be. Being in a church is always a good spot, I suppose. <laughs> well, yes, 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 yes. Oh, so what made you decide to run for council? Well, the transparency in the city, there's none. Ever since COVID-19 hit, the city shut down with their transparency here in the city. There, you, nobody knows nothing. We know they're spending lots of money on stuff that we don't need, but we don't know why. So okay. that's why I'm running for city council. So you mean in like they don't have it up online or? Somebody? They don't have nothing. I don't know. They spent $3.5 million on something that we don't need, but we'll talk about that later, Rob. <laughs> okay. How about that sound? <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> We'll get back to that later in this, in this progress. Well, well, let's see, Tony. What sets you, same question I ask everybody else, what sets you apart to make you uh, different than everybody else running for council? Well, I'll tell you what, what stands out for me, for myself, yep. is I don't take crap from nobody. Nobody tells me where to sit and how to act and who to talk to, when to talk to, and how to talk to. We have a little thing in the city now that there's five of them, that gentlemen, that like to take over the city and tell people what to do. Well, see, that's different because I, I told them four years ago when I ran that if I was in City Hall, I'd have jobs here on the river. I wouldn't sit back and relax and let what's going on in the city be like it is. I'm now. just I lost my job five years ago. I worked at a great lumber yard. I worked for Newcastle Lumber. I lost my job a year before I ran for the election. And I told them, I'm here to fight for the people of Miramichi. We need jobs here on the Miramichi. We need to change then. Now it's four, five years later, it's a whole different ballpark. We have a lot of problems here on the, on the city, Rob, and this is not a joke. I drove taxi for four of those years at night. I've seen the problems here on the Miramichi at night driving. I've talked to a lot of people here on the Miramichi while driving taxi. And the last little while, the last two and a half years since the COVID-19 hit Miramichi, that's why I'm not out campaigning. Because people here on the Miramichi are worried about the COVID-19. People don't know where, what's going on, what's happening, because the government changes the rules every day for this, this COVID-19, and nobody knows what's going on. We have a city that was in yellow, red, green, orange, whatever you want to put it in, and we never had COVID in the Miramichi. We had COVID around the Miramichi. I'm not denying that. We had it in Trackety. We had it in Ship Again. We had it in St. Louis de Kent. We had it all these places around close to the Miramichi but we never had it in the Miramichi until recently we had, I think five cases or even seven cases in the Miramichi, but that was at the very end of this pandemic that's going on right now. But okay. other than that, we, we got to take a stop and take a look at what's been going on at city hall. That's my main concern. So how would you make it, how like, would you make it more transparent to people? How well, would you more transparent what you about what's going on? Right. They didn't have to shut down everything. They should have kept going. They had the meetings every month. They should have had people watching the meetings. So people knew what was going on. But since COVID-19, they said, okay, got restrictions. But you know what, Rob? Everybody has to wear one of these. You can still have a meeting with people wearing these in, in, in City Hall. I don't think they're prone to not being, being able to be worn in City Hall. This is a mess. Like I have seniors calling me saying, Tony, what are you bringing to the table? Well, what I'm bringing to the table is transparency. There's a few things in City Hall that need to be opened up and shown what's going on so people in Miramichi can understand it. Now, you're going to come on with questions for me about the drug problem in the Miramichi. Yeah, well, you're saying you were driving taxis, so you must come across some of what's going oh, on. Oh, Rob, I've seen a lot of people that are hooked on crystal meth. Yes. In the last five years. And I feel very sad about this problem. But I've been talking to people, like asking people, what is the best scenario to get this problem under control? And the only one scenario that I come up, I've heard that made sense was Hervis House. It's a place in Moncton. There's a place in Fredericton. 
Now, I was talking to Peggy McLean recently, and she said she's trying to, she's going to, for the Conservative government, they're going to try to get it here in the Mayor Machine. It is definitely needed here in the Mayor Machine for this drug problem. What, say, say the center again that you said? The name Harvest was? House. Oh, Harvest it, House. Okay. Harvest yeah. House, okay. Michelle, this is a place Michelle Conroy's been working on that for a while. Okay. Okay. Now, um, I asked Peggy about it, and I asked a few other people that were talking to me about it. They said, well, like, people can go in and get a needle, all right, in their arm. And it takes the withdrawals away from meth. I said, well, we really need that here. We need to start looking out for our people in Mayor Machine. We have a lot of homeless problems now because of it. And it's a big deal here in Mayor Machine. Like I, I grew up here now, I'm, I'm 53 years old. And we only started having problems with like homeless shelters, like homeless people now in the last four years since the crystal meth. And it's, it's, People that are on it is unbelievable. Like they're only in their twenties and thirties that are hooked on this thing. There's mothers, there's fathers, there's like, it's a big pandemic here on the river and it needs to be taken care of. I just, when I said I was gonna take care of the drug, drug, drug problem on the mirror machine, I didn't say I was going after the cops. That was not my indication of going after cops. Cops have no idea how to control this problem. They don't, they, they know it's a problem. They know it's a big problem, but they have no way of taking care of it if we have nothing here to take care of it from. Now, bringing Harvest House here would be a big deal for me. Would put a place in our city, we find a place in our city in a building where we can have people go in. If it is a affectional affections that can get things done and help people get off this problem, it'd be great. So it you're saying take one of the city. The, the city buildings to use for Harvest House and help use well, it that the, way, the, or the, how, how would we go about place to put it in the mirror machine? Like someone that can like run a building, like Harvest House can come in, run a building, like any building that we have that's vacant right now, that we can have people go in, like 20, 30 people go in, like that are hooked on crystal meth, get the needle and be monitored for about 30 days to 60 days to make sure that they're staying true to word to word, like want to get off crystal meth. That would help people in Mary Machine, especially the homeless, because nobody wants to rent to them who's ever hooked on crystal meth. Because they're really out there, Rob. Believe me, I know. I've seen it. I oh, dealt with definitely, them. definitely an epidemic out there. I've definitely dealt with them, so I know what it's all about. I know what they're. It's uh, not and good. I know there's groups really working on trying to bring Harvest House here and things. And we've they've looked at buildings, and then some of the cities, places, the buildings they looked at, people went against it, said no, we can't use that building. So it, I think it's 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 quite a challenge to get a building and use for it. Well, we need to we need to get a building here. We need to get something done for these people. Like you can't deal with a problem if you're not going to try to fix the problem. This is true. It's <laughs> true. Like, fix it. like I can say, well, okay, we're going to bring Harvest House here, but if we bring we can't bring them here to put them in a place to do it, there's you can't complain about the problem because you're not fixing the problem. You're trying to avoid the problem. People that own these buildings gotta stand up and say, okay. We have a problem here in the mirror machine. We really do have a problem with crystal meth in the mirror machine. Okay, Mr. Russell's trying to fix this problem. He's trying to get this place here to help people get off crystal meth because I don't like it no more than you do, Rob, or anyone else in the mirror machine. We know it's a pandemic. Let's try working on this pandemic to get rid of this pandemic. And that's not even talking about COVID. We're just talking about helping people get off the streets, make their lives back to normal. And I wanna bring jobs here so I can put people in jobs that are normal. So what would you do? So that will bring me to the next question, the economic development. We've, we've brought in, there's quite a few jobs have come in here. What would you do to keep jobs coming in and, and filling places and getting work here for people? What's your, well, what's your vision for that? I, I just heard Virtual Mills is bought by a new owner. Okay, he's from the States. We don't have a plywood plant here. Okay, what I heard was the guy that owns Virtual's that just bought it is looking for old employees that used to work there. Now, I know a lot of them have went to Urbeck, a lot, of, a lot of the younger men, but they're in their 40s or 50s now. And a lot of the other men are all retired. They're all, because it's been closed for 15 years, I think, that mill. It hasn't been running, I don't think, since Robbie Tozer owned it. So now I, my agenda is to go talk to him. I tried to go over the mill a few times there because uh, the gentleman I talked to that used to work there said he drives a red truck. If his red truck's there, that means he's there. But every time I went over, the, the gate's been closed. So I can't find out. I know they're working on it. They're working on the roof because it has a leak in it over the glue gun. Glue is, I guess, because it's a flat roof. And where yeah. it's been sitting so long, it started to leak. So if I can get to talk to him, I'd like to see where his plans are and what he wants to do here in the mirror machine. If he's going to try to rehire 
old employees or he's going to try to hire new employees or what's what's his basis right now as far as the wood allegations and stuff like that that we have to we have to talk to the provincial government and i know about talking to lisa harris and bill frazier and all these people because i know where they were when we were i had a job at the mill <laughs> and as far as getting their allegations back like i know the last owner of the mill got 25 percent but he wanted um 15 or 20 million dollars from the government to start up now i don't know if the guy from the states wants the same deal or what he's trying to to try to establish opening up the mill but i think if we need to talk to the provincial government on behalf of mayor machine city i would go personally go to fredericton and talk to them like this is a this is for a mayor machine i'm i'm fighting for the mayor machine and jobs i'm not trying to do anything to benefit myself like i said i at the first i have a job i work at the district office i'm trying to get my schooling done and that's what my plans are for me my plans are were to get my schooling done get a good job at custodian and stay there for 15 to 20 years and retire so what would you do on a on a file like say the multiplex we have old buildings that are, are struggling here and then we need the cost of building a new building is astronomical the cost of keeping the old buildings is astronomical how do you make a choice and how do you go about it okay rob as far as the multiplex my concern on the multiplex is it's a waste of money right now it really is a waste of money we have a, a facility in newcastle it's called a rink okay they said a chatham rink is no longer viable to be running because it's cost efficient it costs too much money to run them okay if that's the problem with that part of it we have a rink in newcastle whoever wants to play hockey work up a schedule that everybody uses that rink for now okay where is the pool goes because they wanted to close down golden Hawk. They want to cut down the, the Chatham outdoor pool and the one at Kingston pool. They want to shut them down. All right, we have a school, Marriage Valley High, that has a beautiful pool, has a beautiful gymnasium, has a beautiful weight room. If you're going to want to spend waste, don't want to waste money there, let's put the money into the school, Marriage Valley High School. Let them work out there. Let them do their swimming there. Let's do everything there. There's nothing wrong with that school. If there was something wrong, the government would tell us. They would shut her down. There's nothing wrong with that school, Marriage Valley High School. It has a beautiful pool, it has a beautiful weight room, it has a beautiful gym. If people want to go there and work out, like Golden Hawk, Golden Hawk uses their gymnasium in the springtime for ball players to go in and throw baseballs to get them warmed up for the summer playing ball. Okay? So your your view would be save money and, and keep what we got, use the facilities we got. So that we do have that we can use. If okay. you don't want to waste money on Chatham Rink and the Gold Golden Hawk and these other two pools, well, we got Marish Valley High. They charge the same amount of money. You can go and swim there, but the outdoor pools are for outdoor. They, I think the one that the Kingsway, if they're having problem ma keep maintenance on the Kingsway pool or the one in Chatham, don't use them. Just tell people, people if they have to swim, they have to swim indoors. They okay. don't seem to mind to tell people to wear a mask. Now I ask, I ask everybody this question too, is uh, about faith, how you feel about faith and religion and how it makes, you know, when you make a decision in something in life, where does your your ideas, your basis come from, from your morals or however, whatever word you want to put it, Christian, Muslim, whatever. But what gives you the idea that says, I'm going to do this for this reason? Well, I'll tell you what, Rob, I'm Catholic. Okay. Been, I was an altar boy when I was a kid. I believe in God. I believe in Jesus. If I were to make a decision, I make it on them. I, I think to myself, what would Jesus think I should do with my life? How should I present myself with my life and what I should go, where I should go forward with this? Now, I've been thinking, contemplating on this for the last six months. Where's my life right now? Well, I'm asking God, what am I supposed to be doing right now in my life? And where he put me is to go for city council, try to help the city. Like I've seen a lot of heartache in this city. I've seen, like I say, and I drove taxis for four years. I've seen a lot of heartache in a lot of people. I see a lot of pain in a lot of people's eyes. It's not good. And that's where my faith is. I think right now I need to be in city hall to help people in Mary Machine. Now for the uh, for the last question, I'm going to give you the floor to to basically plead your case and say everything about it. But I just wanted to say thank you for running. Uh, everybody who uh, steps up to want to make a difference in the city, it's 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 important that we know it's a lot of work, and uh, you know it's definitely not for the money. <laughs> it's, it's, no, it's definitely not for the money. It's, it's something to uh, they they believe in a difference, and I want to thank you for putting your name in there and giving your ideas and talking about your stuff. And I'll give you the floor to end the show and just let us know uh, why we should vote for you for city council. Tour. Well, you need to vote for me for city council because I'm not going to, I'm going to stand up for the people of Miramichi. I'm going to stand up for the seniors that want transparency in the city here. They need to know what's going on, how are our taxpayer dollars are being spent. 
They're paying a lot of money for taxes now. I know it's a big thing with the COVID-19, where we're standing right now with COVID-19, but I believe I can bring jobs here to the Miramichi. I really believe I can talk to people and get jobs to come here. I'm pretty, awesome. pretty, I, I stand up pretty good, Rob, when I start talking, right? Because I'm pretty loud. <laughs> people are probably going to wonder, what the? But after they get to know me, they say, okay, good enough. It's just him. Well, I want to thank you for coming on, Tony, and talking with us and say hi to Tammy and John for me. I uh, great people doing, helping change the city and make a difference. So, uh, Oh, yes, they're doing a great job. And I'll tell them you said hi, Rob. I you have will. a wonderful day and enjoy your week. You too. You have a great day and good luck on your run. All right. Thanks, pal. Thanks, Tony. No trouble. Bye. Bird on a tree